Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to walk through a TFSA and I know we've done videos on tax-free savings accounts. This one's going to be a little bit different and based on a lot of the comments, the phone calls, the, the, the questions that we get in our office, a lot of you still don't have a full understanding of a TFSA. And my goal in this channel is to educate all of you watching these videos so that you have a full understanding of every aspect of your financial retirement tax estate plan. Okay, so if you're watching this and you think, no, nope, I got a TFSA down pat, I know exactly what it is, I'm doing it right, you may want to stay to the end because I'm going to go through my personal strategy. Again, it's my personal strategy, it may not be the best for you, but it may open up your eyes to some things that can be done within a TFSA. So in this video, we're going to go through about six different steps. So we're going to talk about what is a TFSA, okay? What is a TFSA? How does it work? We're going to talk about contribution limits. We're going to talk about withdrawal rules, and this is where a lot of people get caught up. So, you know, if you've taken money out of your TFSA or you're going to need to down the road, which most of you will, how do you do that? How do you do it efficiently? There are tips and tricks around when, time, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll go through that in this video as well. I'm going to break down some of the mistakes that we see a lot of you make day in and day out in your TFSA. So we'll break down some of the mistakes that we see our clients, our you know viewers make. Um, and we're also going to talk about the importance of a TFSA in your retirement plan, your financial plan, you know, whatever age you're at, the importance of a TFSA and how it can be built into your overall plan and tax strategy. And lastly, I'll go through my TFSA, how I use it, what's worked for me, what hasn't worked for me, and hopefully that'll help you with your TFSA moving forward. So what is a TFSA account? A tax-free savings account was introduced in Canada in 2009. Now, every year you get new contribution room. So it's, a, it's an account that builds up over time and anything that you put into the TFSA account is after tax money, okay? Unlike an RSP where you get a tax break going in, you do not get a tax break going into a tax-free savings account, but everything that grows in that account grows tax-free. So when you pull it out, it's tax-free money. That's the biggest kicker here. And this is why it's so important to understand the parameters around a TFSA, which we'll go through in this video, because utilizing that tax-free growth is going to allow you to build wealth, to compound your wealth, and really create a lot of tax strategy when you need to draw money, especially in retirement. We'll link above up here our video on tax free. If you want to learn kind of the full ins and outs of the tax free, it's up here. But essentially, it's an, it's an investment account. It's an umbrella, much like your RSP. You have your TFSA. You may have an RESP or RDSP or other accounts. It's an umbrella. Under that umbrella, you can have many types of different investments. You can invest in a high interest savings account, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. All those types of investments can fall within that umbrella of a TFSA. Okay, again, there's a limit, so make sure that you understand your limits. We'll, we'll go through in a minute here. But as long as you're within that limit, so you can put money into a TFSA, you can invest in a multitude of different things, and it grows tax-free. So if you put 50,000 into your tax-free savings account, and it goes to $100,000 and you pull it out, that $50,000 gain is absolutely tax-free in your pocket. Okay, um, now let's jump into contribution limits, okay? Because I want to kind of piggyback off that last comment. If your account goes from $50,000 to $100,000 and you take it out, you have now increased your contribution room, okay? So contribution room in 2021 is $75,500 as long as you've been in Canada since 2009 and you were at least 18 years of age in 2009, okay? If you weren't 18, then you got to wait, you know, whatever year it starts in 18. And we'll put the contribution limits up on the screen here. You can break it down. We'll also link it below. Um, but it, it's based on when you turn 18. If you live in BC and a couple other provinces, you can't actually open a TFSA until you're 19 years old, but you earn the contribution room from when you're 18. Okay. So open it up at 19. You can only, yeah, uh, you start getting the contribution room from 18. Ontario and most provinces, you can open up a TFSA room when you're 18 years old. So let's say you're in your 50s or 60s, you've lived in Canada your whole life and you're looking to now maximize your TFSA. You've never used it before, you didn't understand it, so you stayed far away from it, okay? Your contribution limit is going to be $75,500, okay? That's how much you could put into the tax rate. So let's assume you throw the $75,500 into a tax rate, you got an inheritance, you had some cash, whatever it is. You've now invested and maxed out your TFSA room. Let's say that 75,500 grows to 150,000 over the next X amount of years, okay? 
So your 75,500 grows to you know, 150,000 and you pull that out. You've now built up more room. As your account grows, if you actually pull that money out, not sell within there, but actually pull the money out of the bank or of your TFSA and put it into your bank account, that's considered a redemption. And you've kind of locked in those gains tax-free, but you've also increased and locked in that increase of your tax-free savings account, okay? So that's important to note, okay? So let's run through an example of this. Let's say you put in that 75,500 on January 1st of 2021, and you looked at your account today and it was worth, again, 150,000. You, you, know, you bought something crazy, it went 100%, perfect, good for you. Now you pull that out this year, okay? So let's say tomorrow, you, you log in, you pull it out, you sell whatever you've invested in, and you actually pull that 150,000 out, put it into your bank account, okay? Now, this is where we run into withdrawal rules, okay? If you withdraw money from a TFSA, you get that contribution room back the following calendar year on January 1st, plus any new contribution room, which right now for 2022, it will be uh, $6,000, okay? So January 1st, 2022, if you've never put into a TFSA and you're at least 18 in 2029, or in 2009, your contribution room in on January 1st, 2022 is going to be uh, $81,500, okay? So let's go back to our example. 75,500 you put in, you maxed out. You've now pulled out your 150, okay? You cannot put anything back into your TFSA account in 2021, okay? You've already maxed it out. Even though you pulled money out, you've already maxed out contributions for that uh, year. Do not put anything else into your tax-free savings for this year. But January 1st, 2022, we can put 150,000, the amount that you pulled out, plus the $6,000 in new contribution room, okay? So $156,000 will be your contribution room on January 1st, 2022. Now let's look at another example. And we get this question a lot of, okay, Adam, you know, my account went from 75,500 to 150, but I'm not pulling it out, but I bought Tesla stock and it shot up and I've done well and I, I wanna sell it and buy something different. How does that work? Well. Let's say you bought Tesla stock in your TFSA and it's gone to 150,000 and you wanna sell Tesla stock, but then reinvest that money, okay? That's exactly what you do. You sell the stock, whatever stock or mutual fund or ETF or whatever you own in there that's done well and you built up uh, a growth or, or gain in there, you're going to sell that, okay? Now you're gonna have cash sitting in your TFSA. You haven't withdrawn it, it's just cash sitting in your TFSA. You can now take that 150,000 and reinvest it in whatever you want within the TFSA account, okay? You only trigger um, you know, the issues as far as not putting more money in and reinvesting it if you actually pull it out of your TFSA to your bank account, okay? If you sell what's ever in your TFSA and don't do anything with it, you just leave it in your TFSA in cash, you can reinvest that and it's again, it's all tax-free money that you're building up here, okay? So be aware of that. So you could sell your stock, you know, essentially, you know, capitalize that gain within the TFSA, reinvest that money and keep it working for you. So now that I've gone through those examples, there's gonna be a few of you saying, well, you'd wanna redeem the 150 and trigger that, you know, that growth and make sure that you, you know, increase that gain um, to increase your TFSA limit. The reality is, is if you pull out the money, yes, you've triggered, you've, you've set your maximum at 150 on your TFSA that you can use the following year, January 1st or forward, okay? Now, if you just sell the 150 though and leave the money in there, you have 150,000 to work with, which means that you've increased your contribution room to 150 because that's what you have to deal with. Now you have cash of 150 in your TFSA. So it's the same thing. Now, let's say you keep the cash in there, you invest, and the next investment goes wrong and it goes back down to 75,500 and you sell it. Again, that's what's in the account that you have to work with, okay? Again, let's say you redeem that 150,000 and wait till January 1st next year. Yes, you have 150,000 contribution room, but again, if you buy a stock or whatever investment that you buy, if it goes from 150 to 75,500, again, you've lowered that availability to invest in there. So whether you pull money out or keep it in there, it's all the same. You only wanna pull money out of a TFSA if you actually need it. You need money to do something with, um, whether it's an emergency, a car, a, a retirement, house, whatever you're using your TFSA for, you only want to pull money out. Don't, you know, think, oh, I made a lot of money. I want to pull it out and, and crystallize that contribution limit. 
it doesn't it doesn't really help you if you leave the money in there that's your contribution limit that's how much cash you have in there so you're really working sideways at that point so leave the money in there if you don't need it reinvest it keep it working for you keep it compounding and keep it growing tax-free now i just want to loop back to the withdrawals okay so make sure you understand this if you take money out of a tfsa you get that contribution room back whether it's big growth or a loss January 1st the next year okay so if you put 75,500 and maximize it January 1st of 2021 and it went down in value let's say it went down to $40,000 you had something come up you had to take the money out January 1st 2022 you'd have your 40,000 whatever amount you took out okay 40,000 plus the new contribution room of $6,000 that you'll get in January 1st 2022 so 46,000 again on the flip if your 75,500 went to 150 or whatever number it went to and you sold it, pulled it out, you're gonna get that money back. Whatever you pull out, you'll get back January 1st. Now, let's look at a bit of a breakdown example. Let's say you you know, put 75,500 in and you took out you know, $10,000 or $20,000. Again, you can't put that back till January 1st. Whatever you take out, doesn't have to be the whole amount, just whatever amount. Now, let's say you put in, yo, know, uh, let's keep the math simple. $55,500, okay, on January 1st. So you still have 20,000 contribution room, okay? You put in 55,500 and it grows to 75,500, okay? So you put in 55,500, it grows to 75,500 and you take out $20,000. Do you still have contribution room, right? A lot of you would say no. The reality is, yes, you do. It, it's not what you pull out, it's what you put in. You only put in uh, 55500 which gives you an extra $20,000 of contribution room, okay? So even if you your account grew to 75500 you pulled 20000 out in 2021, the same year you put it in, you could still put back $20,000 into the account because you haven't maximized contributions for that year, okay? So let's say, again, that example, 55000 grew to 75500 you took out 20000 Okay, so you're back down to 55,500. And then by the end of the year, you had another 20,000. So you put 20,000 back in. So the account's up to 75,500, okay? But remember, you still took out that $20,000 gain in the year. So come January 1st, 2022, you're going to have your regular $6,000 in new contribution limit, but you're also gonna have that $20,000 you took out. So even though you have 75,500 in your TFSA account, Come January 1st, 2022, you're going to have 26,000 new contribution room, okay? That's how this works. So make sure you track it. You can log into your CRA account and look at what your TFSA contribution limit is, much like your RSP. It's very complicated. It's not the best system, I will say that. Uh, come the second half of the year, so this time of year now when we're year viewing this, hopefully September, October-ish, um, the TFSA number should be fairly accurate as long as you know what you've put in and taken out in this calendar year. But if you look at your uh, contributions uh, and, and TFSA limit, maybe on CRA website, January, February, March, April, like kind of when you haven't filed your taxes yet and it's been processed, uh, it won't include 2021 contributions and withdrawals and anything that you've done in early 2022. So just be aware of that, you know, make sure that you kind of track it on your end the best you can. That will save you a lot of headache down the road. Okay, so now I wanna jump into a few mistakes that we see people make. So the number one mistake we see people make is what we just talked about. They take money in and out, they treat it like a bank account and you can't do that, okay? Um, sure, you could put in 10,000, take out 10, put in 10, take out 10, but remember, you can't put in more than your contribution limit, whatever that is, okay? That's important. Don't treat the TFSA like a bank account. It shouldn't be an in and out. It is a tax-free savings account. In my opinion, and most in our industry, they name the account wrong. It should be a tax-free investing account, okay? This account should be used for investing, not savings like your bank account, okay? So keep that in mind. So withdrawal limits and you know taking money out, putting money in, that's the number one mistake we see people make. Put money in, invest it, should be a long-term investment, um, but Make sure you're not taking money in and out and kind of bumping over your contribution limit because it's a 1% penalty per month on any over contribution. So it's very punitive. One of the other big mistakes that we see people make is they're using their tax-free savings account uh, in a high interest savings account. So you're earning, you probably for a lot of you, not even 1%, okay? The government has given you an investment account that you can invest in and grow money tax-free. 
Growing it at 0 0.51, 1.3%, there's not a huge benefit there, okay? Even if you've maxed this out 75,500 and you're getting a 1% on your savings account, which if you are, you're not at the bank, you're at you know EQ Bank or something like that, okay? 1%, maybe you're getting 1.2% or something like that. So you're earning maybe 750, maybe $1,000 a year, which perfect, that, that's great. And it's tax-free, but you're underutilizing the account. It's not made for a high interest savings account. And the problem is when it came out in 2009, all the marketing behind our big financial institutions push this thing as a high interest savings account. So you put your tax-free savings account into a high interest savings account. So again, tax-free savings is that the, the umbrella, that's a type of account, just like an RSP. And then within that, they're saying, you know what, you should buy a high interest savings account, which again, right now it's not high interest, it's low interest savings account at like 0.2.3% at the banks, okay? So what's the benefit of having that investment in a tax-free, okay? This is like the greatest, investment account the government's ever given us to allow us to grow money tax-free you're not utilizing it if your money's sitting at 0.21 1.2 it's just not working for you and you're not using the account how it should be used okay and we'll go through that in a minute that is a huge mistake we see people make use your tax-free savings account to invest to grow wealth and to grow that wealth tax-free it's the only place you can do it outside of your principal residence cue the comments yes principal residence you know, and that could be gone at some point too, right? Capital gains exemption, all that. Um, so be aware, tax-free savings account is probably the best tool that the government's given us to build wealth in Canada. Use it properly. The third mistake we see clients make, and this is the last one I'll comment in this video, is not listing your spouse or partner, common law partner, as a successor beneficiary or successor holder, they call it, okay? Um, you can list a beneficiary, you can list a successor holder, okay? Now, let's make this clear. A successor holder can only, only be a spouse or common law partner. It can't be a kid, a grandkid, a nephew, a grandparent, whoever. It can only be a spouse or common law partner. If it's not those people, it has to be a beneficiary. If you have a spouse or common law partner, list them as a successor holder on your TFSA, not a beneficiary. If you list them as a beneficiary and you have them listed as a beneficiary, it's better than nothing, but you want to contact your financial institution and change that to a successor holder. It creates more flexibility. It's going to get the money in your hands, but more importantly, it layers on their contribution. So if you both maximize your TFSA, what, what, if and when your spouse or, or common law partner passes away, their TFSA basically lumps on top of yours. Okay? It doubles your contribution room or even more potentially. Uh, it just creates that flexibility. If you lift, list your spouse or common law partner as a beneficiary, there are options to make that happen. But again, there's some taxes around it and the growth in, your, in, in their TFSA account between time of death and when you move that over, it's gonna be taxable. Um, there's a lot more forms to fill out. It's way more complicated. Go in, sign one piece of paper now, listing them as successor holder, and you're gonna save yourself a huge headache down the road. We have a full video on this, successor holder video. We'll link it up above. Check that out. If you don't understand successor holder versus beneficiary, watch that video. It'll walk through the whole thing You'll have a full understanding. I think this is the number one tip and trick that we've had on our channel through 100 plus videos that you guys have given us the most feedback on. And I think it's going to save our viewers the most money, okay? So if you think of successor holder and the benefits of it, the tax savings of it, you know, we have you know, tens of thousands of viewers on this channel. If a thousand or 2000 of you do it, I'm gonna say this is gonna save a combined between all our viewers in the millions of dollars in taxes and headache and savings and all that kind of stuff. So if you have a spouse or common law partner, make sure to have this successor holder. Um, everyone else has to be a beneficiary, okay? So don't leave a comment below asking if your nephew can be, he can't, okay? Um, spouse, common law partner, that's it. Now let's break down the importance of a TFSA account. So a tax-free savings account is monumental in your overall plan, whether you're in your 20s or your 70s, okay? So I wanna just kind of break it down by generation, okay? So if you're in your 20 or 30s, you're probably saving for a home, okay? You're saving up as much as you can. Utilize the RSP room. If you're not, you know, if you're making about above 50,000, this is a general rule. But if you're in a bit of a higher tax bracket, make sure you use RSP. You can pull up to $35,000 each, you and your spouse or common law partner for a down payment if you qualify as a first time home buyer. So an RSP is a great place there, but hopefully you're saving a bit more than that for your home. And if you are, the tax free savings account is a great place to do that, okay? You can put money in there, it grows tax free. When you pull it out, all that money is gonna be tax free in your hands. 
which is important because if you had to pull it out and pay tax on it, it's going to drive up your taxable income. You're going to owe more taxes. It creates a bit of a headache, right? So use a tax or savings account to build up to save for a house. Now, just remember, as you get closer to the point where you want to buy a house, you're going to have to decrease risk. You may even at some point pull out of a tax or savings, just have it in cash. Just be aware, right? If you're invested, whatever you're invested in in that TFSA, if you're invested in the markets, just make sure you start to wind that down as you get closer to buying a house because you know, maybe the housing market drops by 20%. It could be the reality is that, you know, the, the uh, real estate market drops along with the stock market. So yes, you're getting a discount on your house, but your TFSA maybe has dropped depending on what you're invested in. So make sure that you de-risk as you get closer to buying that home, okay? Um, the other thing that it's great for, and this is what I use it for, okay? So this middle ground, the 40, 50 year old club, um, you know, A is building wealth for retirement. So I'm building up my tax or savings account for retirement, okay? But it could be also used, and we have a lot of clients use it for this, as an emergency fund. Now, again, I've talked about don't put your TFSA in a high interest savings account, which is where you want your emergency fund. But here's another strategy for you, and it works well, it's not for everyone. You have to understand what you're doing. You have to understand the risk and the concept and have everything set up. But you could have your TFSA account invested, growing for you. Hopefully, you're you know you're getting five to seven percent a year on, on growth, uh, whether it's through a mutual fund or ETF. Um, you're buying your own stock portfolio, using a portfolio manager, whatever it is. I, I we're not going to go into that in this video, but it's growing now. If on the other end you have a line of credit against your home, a home equity line of credit that's a fairly low interest rate, you could have your TFSA and know that that could be a bit of a buffer in an emergency. Now, if you have an emergency. You know, and the market's down, let's say, and your TFSA has dropped a bit. You don't want to pull money out of there for the emergency, but you could access your line of credit short term, use your line of credit, and then when the market comes back up and you think it's fair valuation, you could sell your TFSA and pay off your line of credit. So that's one strategy to keep your money working for you and your TFSA. Have that home equity line of credit, which costs you nothing. At, you know, if you're not using it, it costs you nothing. So you're using your wealth, your money to build as best you can for you. And if that emergency does hit, you rely on this short term, but essentially use your tax or savings as your emergency fund at some point down the road to pay off the line of credit. So that's one strategy that, you know, I would say is a good option for those that understand and plan it accordingly. Okay. Now a tax or savings account as you get into your 60s, 70s, 80s is very important because it's a way to pull money out in retirement on a tax free basis. Okay. So when we look at GIS benefits, OAS clawback, and just overall amount of tax and tax planning, um, you know, whether it's, you know, you need those big one, uh, you know, large purchases, whether it's a new vehicle, a new roof, whatever it is in retirement, or you want to do those big trips. A lot of times early in retirement, you want to do the big European trip or whatever it is that are kind of a one-time large expense. A tax free savings account is a great place to be able to pull money out or at least complement the TFC with say an RSP or pension or whatever else to get a bit of a boost in income in a year, but not draw up that taxable income, right? Keeping your tax bill somewhat level, but increasing that income. So in retirement, we do plans every day for a lot of you watching these videos. And let me tell you, the TFSA is a great, the best tool in leveling out your tax bill in retirement and creating a nice estate plan. Again, a lot of our strategy uh, for plans that we put together and, and what makes sense tax wise is, you know, draw down, melt down that RSP. A lot of times you don't need all that money. So it's, you know, you can use your tax free savings account in retirement as well, build it up. Um, a lot of plans we put together, you know, again, we do tax strategy to life expectancy in that mid to late eighties. So if you were to pass away when you're supposed to pass away, um, you know, there's very little estate tax, but you still need a bit of assets there in case you keep living past that age. And a lot of times that money's sitting in a tax free savings account. So it's very efficient. It can be passed past tax on when you do pass away, but it's there and accessible to draw an income off of. Okay. So many different ways to use a TFSA and, and different stages of life where it's so important. So again, whether you're, you're 18 years old or you're 88 years old, a tax free savings account should be well used within your overall financial and retirement plan. So I just want to quickly go through my own personal strategy with my TFSA. So the majority of my TFSA and my wife's TFSA is built for retirement. Okay. So we have it invested at BCB Asset Management, uh, who is one of our partner firms for the investments for our clients. Uh, they buy blue chip dividend paying stocks. So about 85, 90% of our TFSA accounts are managed through them. Uh, again, they own, you know, Canadian banks, energy companies, Johnson Johnson, FedEx. 
some of these big blue chip dividend paying stocks, okay? They manage that for us. It's clean, it's simple, it's taken care of. I do leave about ten to $15,000 in a well simple trade account in a TFSA. So it's invested, again, that umbrella is a TFSA. It's that well simple trade, which allows me to buy individual stocks, okay? So I have a bit of an itch to scratch there. I like to make small investments in a few different companies that I think have good growth potential. Um, you know, whatever those companies are, everyone's got their idea of, hey, this company could do well. Just be aware of who you're listening to and where you're getting your research from. If it's your neighbor, Joe, may not be the best research, okay? So just make sure you understand where you're getting your research. When you invest money yourself like that, there's a huge risk to it, okay? Do the research. If you have the itch to scratch as far as, you know, getting your own investment investment going, um, you know, building up your own account, picking your stocks, buying them, selling them, there's, you know, there's a lot of knowledge you have to have, a lot of research. If you're not willing to do that, hire someone to manage your account for you. Again, I do for 90% of mine. But the other percentage, 10, 15,000, I like to go out and buy a few stocks. I'm willing to lose that money. If that goes to zero, I lose the contribution room and I lose the money. I'm okay with that because on the flip side, if my 10 or 15,000 goes to 50,000 and those stocks do well, it's tax-free growth, okay? So there's a risk reward there in that. And that's why I only take a small piece of the overall TFSA, you know, about 10%. Um, because again, if I lose it, I can build it back, you know, down the road, get more contribution room back. And it's only a small amount of my, you know, uh, between my wife and I, about 10% of our contribution room. So keep that in mind. If you have an inch to scratch, take, you know, 10% of your TFSA room or whatever the number is that you're comfortable with. Uh, just make sure that that's part of your plan, okay? Understand that if I, if you lose 10, 15, whatever you carve out for or that itch to scratch and, and buy your own stocks or whatever you want to do, you need to be willing to lose that, okay? So if you have a financial plan put together, if you wipe out that 10 or 15,000, does it change your plan? And if it does, I would not recommend this. But a lot of you I talk to, you have that itch to scratch. I get it. Um, car out a small piece that you're willing to lose. Have it in something like a well simple trade or quest trade or some sort of trade account where you can buy and sell stocks under your TFSA umbrella. Remember, you can have multiple TFSAs, okay? Um, but you just can't go over your overall contribution limit. Set that up, you know, do what you need to do to itch that scratch or to scratch that itch. And uh, again, just be aware that if you lose it, you've lost your contribution room. So that's how I use it. Again, majority is managed professionally, blue chip safe, but good growth over time, paying me dividends, compounding those dividends. Um, and then I use a little bit of it to kind of, you know, play with essentially. Um, you know, that's a nice way to put it. So again, I don't recommend that for you. That's what I do. That's what I said I'd talk about in this video. So there you go. Uh, th that's kind of how I, you know, have my play money, buy those few companies that I think have good growth potential. And again, if they go bankrupt, it's not going to blow up my world as far as that goes. So, um, so thanks for joining us in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know this is a longer video than usual. We have a lot of content in here. Hopefully you had time to kind of go through everything. Maybe you watch it one and a half times speed, which I don't blame you for. That's how I watch YouTube as well. So <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it added value to you. Hopefully you picked up a few tips and tricks for your TFSA account and we'll see you in the next video.